Welcome back. The next talk valuation method we will discuss is the corporate volume model. The corporate volume model and the dividend growth model are very similar, since both uses discounting. The main difference is that under the corporate volume model, we compute first for the market value of the firm. The corporate volume model is also called free cash flow method since it measures the market value of the firm as the present value of free cash flow. You've taken up cash flow estimation already in your accounting 202 last semester. Recall that free cash flows is computed as net operating profit after tax plus depreciation minus capital expenditure, change in working capital, and change in other assets. Using the corporate volume model, we compute for the market volume per stock as follows. First, we solve for the market volume of the firm by computing for the present volume of free cash flows. Second, we deduct the market volume of debt and preferred stock to get the market volume of common stock. We then divide it by the number of common stocks to get the market volume per stock. Here is a sample problem. Say today is December 2020. The free cash flow in 2021 is computed as net operating profit after tax 500 million, add back depreciation 100 million, deduct capital expenditures 200 million equals 400 million dollars. The free cash flow is expected to grow at a constant rate of 6%. So we get the present value or the market value of the firm as follows. Free cash flow 400 million dollars all over WAC 10% minus constant growth rate 6% equals $10 billion. Take note that in discounting, we use WAC and not the required rate of return on equity since the free cash flows pertain to the entire firm and not just common stock. From the $10 billion, we deduct the market value of debt amounting to $3 billion to get the market value of common stock amounting to $7 billion. We divide it by 2 billion shares and we get the market volume per share of $35. Another way of valuing stocks is through firm multiples. This method is consistent with the relative valuation approach as it uses the multiples of comparable firms to value a company stock. The common multiples used are price earnings, price cash flows, and price sales. Say that a company has an earnings per share of $2.45. The price earnings of comparable firms is 13. The market value of the stock is then computed as $2.45 times 13 or $31.85. Aside from common stock, we also have preferred stock. Preferred stocks are considered hybrid securities because they have characteristics of both bonds and stocks. Preferred stocks have fixed dividends just like how bonds generally require fixed payments of interest and principal. However, unlike with bonds, a company may choose not to pay dividends to preferred stockholders, provided that it does not pay dividends to common stockholders without paying the preferred stockholders first. Hence, just like common stock, preferred stocks also do not guarantee dividends. Say that we have a preferred stock that pays a fixed dividend of $5 and sells for $50. How much is the required rate of return? The formula to answer this question is similar to the constant growth formula, except that we don't have a growth rate. Hence, the formula as follows. Using this formula, the required rate of return is 10%. And that ends our video lecture on stock valuation. As always, I will entertain your questions in our FB page and during our live meetings. Bye!